In this video, we'll be introducing the concept of implicit differentiation. In the last video, we talked about the small increments rule and how it can be used to estimate change in a function. So if we had a function like we do on the right, f of x is equal to x squared, we could estimate the change that we would get at x is equal to 6 to x is equal to 8. It would involve taking the slope at 6, at x is equal to 6, calculating that first derivative, calculating that slope at that point, and then we would multiply it by the change in x, and we would get the change in f. Now this would be an approximation. As we can see, the result would end up with some error here, where we wouldn't quite be hitting our actual f of x value, but we'd be pretty close to it. Now what happens as the size of this increment, change in x, decreases, the accuracy of our estimate improves. For instance, if we were to try to estimate the change from 6 to 7 instead, we would take that same slope, we would estimate this change, and the error here would be much smaller. And as we get this value of change in x to be smaller and smaller, what happens is we get more and more accurate with our estimate. Now, as these x values get smaller and smaller, eventually they're going to become infinitesimally small. And when we get to that limit, that infinitesimally small level, we call this a differential. And we change the notation to dx and dy. And what's going to happen is this corresponding error also shrinks and shrinks and shrinks until we have an exact value for our change instead of just an approximation. That error gets so small it becomes insignificant. We change the notation such that this becomes equal and instead of deltas, those triangles indicating the changes in f, x, and y, we call it df, dx, dy respectively. These are what are referred to as differentials the result when our change in x or our change in y are infinitesimally small. Now if this feels like a lot, don't worry. This is background information and you won't have to be able to get here on your own. What we're going to do next is referred to as implicit differentiation. If we have a function such as 25 is equal to 5xy plus 2x squared, y squared minus 3x plus 2y. Now there are only two variables here, y and x. So y would be a function of x or vice versa. So imagine if we wanted to find the derivative dy by dx. If we wanted to do this using our traditional approaches, we would have to define y as a function of x. But looking at how many combinations of x's and y's there are in this function, that would be insanely difficult to define y as a function of x. Instead, we're going to leave behind the traditional approach of defining y as a function of x first and then doing the derivative, and we're going to differentiate this function using implicit differentiation, a new technique. So taking the function that we have, 25 is equal to 5xy plus 2x squared y squared minus 3x plus 2y, let's call that whole function f of xy. So here's our function. We're just going to rename it f of xy. Now we're going to use the information we have on differentials. So in the previous slide, I showed how df is equal to dF by dx times dx plus dF by dy by dy. Now below this, I'll show it in blue here, I have an equivalent equation where I'm using f sub x and f sub y instead of dF by dx and dF by dy respectively. In blue is the equivalent to what's above in yellow. Now if I did the differential of this equation that I have right here, I would get df is equal to f sub x, the partial derivative with respect to x, times dx, plus f sub y, the partial derivative with respect to y, times dy. And solving for these partial derivatives really wouldn't be that bad. Now what is this differential df going to be? What is the value of that differential going to end up being? 
Well, let's remember that f of xy is equal to 25. It's a constant. Therefore, it's not changing at all. So this change, this df value, this change ends up being equal to 0. Because f of xy is a constant, that differential for f ends up being equal to 0. So we can rewrite this as 0 is equal to f sub x dx plus f sub y dy. Now this can be rearranged if I move fy dy over to the other side of the equation by subtracting on both sides. What I'll get is negative fy dy is equal to fx dx. Now if I divide both sides by dx and both sides by negative fy, the negative fy's here will cancel, the dx's here will cancel, and I'll be left with dy by dx is equal to negative fx over fy. And that's this right here. And that's what we were trying to solve for, dy by dx, the derivative of y with respect to x. And now I can solve for that if I can do the partial derivative of f with respect to x and f with respect to y. Now that is a lot. You're not expected to remember this derivation. What we really need to know at the end of this is this relationship right here. And this can be in your formula sheet. That to solve for dy by dx, you would take negative fx over fy. And this relationship extends further to functions of more than two variables. If we had a function of three variables, f of x, y, z, equaling a constant, so we had three variables, we can set up f of x, y, z is equal to a constant, then we can solve for di z by di x, di z by di y, di y by di x, Basically, any combination of variables, we can look at how they change with respect to each other. And really, it's as simple as having negative, and we take the partial derivative of what's down below, divided by the partial derivative of what's above. You can see this relationship every time. Now, let's try to apply this to some problems so that it can start to make sense.